Hi everyone, Emma here. I have a special treat for you today. So I was getting ready to create a pin and let me see where am I? So I ordered a bunch of these um, these pins. They were pretty inexpensive and it shows they're pretty pretty bad. Um, hopefully they will work. If not, I'll have to come up with maybe order some better ones. Yeah, you look at the rust on this. So anyway, we'll um, we'll give it a go. But in the meantime, this is I I started doing it and then re realized that maybe I should do this in a video because <laughs> I never or very seldom do I show you how I do my bead embroidery because. It usually takes so long, but because we're using different size beads and stuff, I think this should go pretty fast. So the idea was I wanted, um, this is the hat that I got for the winter, and um, I wanted to put some embellishment on it. It doesn't have any kind of neat leather tags or anything. So this is what I came up with. So. I just checked to make sure that this actually, I, I kind of had a feeling that it was a little big, um, but I think I'm not super experienced in doing bead embroidery, so I think going bigger is probably a better idea in the sense of it's a little easier to manage. Um, and like I said, we're using different size beads, so it should get covered up pretty quick. Um, so yeah, so that's the hat and that's, you know, where it's going to go. So it should fit on the rim of the hat. So let's put this aside. What I, um, was inspired by <laughs> is these things. I think they're hilarious. <laughs> Let me adjust the camera here. I, I'm obsessed. So I haven't decided what color. And I thought I had one here, but you know what? The cat... Oh, there, there. There's more in here. So let me grab my goodies here. So I'm going to use 1G thread. You know, it's funny. I bought this and I thought I'll never go through that. And look at already. I'm almost at the end. There's still lots. So I can't decide which color pom-pom. So I think the brown is out. So it's either, I didn't realize I don't have any, um, when I ordered them, they didn't have the color white. And I know I have some white ones because they came in a Didi's box. Yeah, there's a white one here. There should be a second one. I don't know where it is. So there's the white one. So... But we'll see. I, oh, sorry, I'm off, off the uh, camera here. So there's the white one. Oh, actually, that looks pretty good. And then here's the pink one. <laughs> They're hilarious. <laughs> and then there's a beige one or a tan one. So, you know what? We'll keep them out. Here's the brown one, but definitely the brown, brown one's out of place. So we'll put the brown one back in here. Do you think I have enough? <laughs> oh, I wish the shipping wasn't so expensive. I'd send some stuff to people. Maybe in your next uh, giveaway, there'll be some pom-poms in there. So I started out with a piece of cardboard and just... Uh, I think this is from a medication and uh, drew out what I wanted to do and of course there's going to be a tail there so initially I was thinking the tail would be right here but I might kind of pop it in there like that so that's that so then I took this and I traced it onto my stiff felt and um, Turtle Soup Beads does a lot of bead embroidery and she has a really cool technique for 
taking your um, soft felt and making it into a stiff felt. So that's an awesome. You should take a look. It's uh, turtle soup beads. So I just went ahead and traced the outline. That's, I ended up with this. This one has sparkles on it. <laughs> so I ended up with this. And then, so I finally figured out, thanks to Razmataz, <laughs> you should check out his uh, channel. He does um, um, native beading and he has some incredible, incredible uh, tutorials and tricks. Like I've watched, say, a 10, 15 minute video of his and he's got like 10 tricks of how to do things and ways to save on certain techniques to make it easier and stuff like that. So definitely check it out. So what he taught me was you take paper and draw your image where you want your lines and then put it over top and you can always tear this paper off after. So you don't have to, but yeah, I guess I would tear it off. Now I actually used printer paper. Probably not a good idea. If you had some thinner paper, it would tear easier. So just to remember. So I'm going to hang on to this one. This is going to be my template to do this again. Maybe I'll make some different color ones. So let's take a look at, I'm going to just, you're going to need some, um, I'm using a size 10 beading needle and the reason I'm using a 10 is so that it goes through the paper and the stiff stuff easily. Um, if you have really fine beads like 50 O's, you may need to use a 12 uh, needle. So I've got some, I have a huge array of stuff. So this here is, no, there we go. This is thread. I don't know if I'll be using it, but you can use it for embellishment. And I can see there is where it's hooked in. Well, there's no point taking that because you're not going to be able to see it it's so thin. But anyway, so this is really good thread for your sewing machine. So um, I've had some metallic thread that I got at the dollar store and it's like coated in metallic and it's it's actually like wrapped in metallic and when you go to use it it peels off and stuff so this is the and this was the the store was closing down so it was uh, I think 60% off so I bought a whole bunch of metallics so I have my pearls I've got some gray pearls I might add some gray in there I'm just gonna put that aside then I've got some of this. I pulled this out, but you know what? I don't know. It looks a little too blingy for me. Let me enlarge this. And I'm going to tilt the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll put that aside, but we have it ready to go. Then we have these two. These are um, check drugs, and they are... Um, I don't know if they're two millimeter. They look pretty small. Let me get my caliper. So that's that's another option for this. Three. Okay. And put those aside for now. And here's some silver ones. That might go well. This might be nice to outline. The bunny rabbit but I have these I think I want to outline the rabbit with these these are um, delicas and they are um, I think they're gold lined it looks silver but I actually think it's gold line so we're gonna keep that one out for sure then I have some treasures these are a little bigger, so I'm definitely going to use those. Probably use it for this area here and his belly. Yeah, I think that's 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 a definite for sure. 
Then we have some peachy. These kind of go with these pearls. So I think, because I'm not going to put all pearls on this, so I might use that. So let's hang on to that one. Then there's some pink of these inside. I think these are 15s. I they look pretty small for 11 O's. So, you know, I think I'd like to have a variation of the pinks, but I actually kind of want to go with this pale pink. So let me put those aside. And I do have these. These are those peanuts, but you know what? I don't think they're kind of big. Um, and I apologize that this is part of doing this is picking these things out. So these are too big. And let me just grab the few that I think might work. And as we go along, we may have to grab stuff anyway. So, so these might work. I don't know that we need a super duper white. <laughs> like my, my, um, that is de a definite for sure. And then, so if we do all these, wait, I think we won't go with any cream. And last but not least, we need his or her eye, which is black. So we have the option of using one of these beads or creating it with these small 11 0 black. And I haven't decided what color to do the nose. I kind of want to do the nose pink. So maybe that goes for the pink nose. Okay, so let's, let's get this. Let's get this started. Okay. So we'll hang on to those right here and those right there. That's going to be the outline. And these so what I might do next is create the outline and then fill in because I feel like you kind of need to give yourself um, outline it so that you keep everything where it needs to be so I don't know if these are going to work Just trying to get an idea here. I think we need to use a smaller bead than that. These are lovely. These I got from N Beads with a collaboration. I'm itching to figure out how to use them. But okay, so let's continue the outline then. So I I think we're gonna do the outline with these guys. Put some out. And my thread is coming out there. So here's the other thing is, um, I've seen people do the bead embroidery where they keep an outline. So maybe do a square of this and then outline it. But when I've done that in the past, because I'm not an experienced beater, when I go to cut it, the thread is on the edge and I've cut my thread that's not fun so don't do that so that's another reason for doing it this way so actually why don't we come in here and then do the line so there we are um yeah that's do you know what i think i'm gonna start up here and then we'll go back on the other so that we, so I'm bringing my needle through. Okay. And I didn't cut this edge here, so we'll probably outline this as well. Okay, so just grab. So I am doing this, this is not 
probably the correct way to do it. But um, so one of the things that Razzmatazz uh, shows you is how to do two needle. And somebody suggested that the last time I was doing some beading. And uh, I love the idea. It makes it so much faster. But I don't have the dexterity with both hands. So I found it super frustrating. So we're just going to go in. and So normally you wouldn't put this many on here. But I'm just going to do that. And then go back and try to position your beads. So make sure it's tight. Let's start here. So one of the things when he does his stuff is he, he, um, like goes over each bead like the way I'm doing. So I'm coming out here. I'm going to go around that bead to position it where I want it. So if you haven't seen my last video, definitely take a look. I'm going to do a draw tonight for um, the giveaway of the bracelet that I made. Okay. So I'm using my thumb nail to kind of position the beads because this part here I kind of want the shoulder of the rabbit to be rounded. And also remember too, when you go to put the other beads in, you can position the other beads and it will push them out. So that actually looks pretty good. So now I'm going to come up as close to the front as possible to that first bead there like that. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through that first bead and attach more beads. So you can see why this is, um, it's probably not the best video to do because it's kind of, unless you enjoy listening to my voice. And you know what? Some people have said they like it. I'm going to give you a few more. So bring these guys down. And like that. Okay. So let's come in a little higher up. There we go. Trying to figure out what's the, oh, what's this here? Nope. Something's tangled here. Oh, did I not? You know what I must have done is gone through the same hole. Because look, it's around the edge. Yep. Let's, let's bring our needle back through here. And you know what? I think we're going to have to take this off. Because you're really not likely to get that thread through there. 
I've done that in the past where I've tried to put the needle through the same hole and the holes are so tiny it's really unlikely and then you've got a worse mess than you started out with so I must have forgot to put it through here Around. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. And as you start doing this more, you do start to find where to put your needle from behind but it takes a little practice that's not where I want it I want it a little bit down oh, there we go and that's why the lines are important because otherwise you could just eyeball it but uh, Kind of try to do a little bit of fanciness. So I think for the next couple, I'll do the, um, I'll do two at a time, because I think, um, do it the proper way. This is weird that, oh well, we'll fix that later. This is why I don't do these on camera. I'm like, okay, pull it apart. But I know a few people have mentioned that they really appreciate it because it, um, you know, it gives you confidence to see me do things wonky. You know, we all have to start somewhere. We're not perfect. There. Okay, so let's come back through here like this. Okay, so that's one technique where you go, you cross over your line to position your beads. And unless you're really skilled at it, <laughs> like I'm not, Um, this is the other way. So you come through the last bead. And, you know, I think normally you add, so I can see why it might, it got wonky. It's because my thread was not in the right position. So it's doing the same thing. Now, once we put the other beads on, hopefully it will straighten that out. So you just take the, I think the technique is you take two beads and put it in and then pass through them again. I'm going to do four because I like going all the way. It's cheating like that. Let's see if we can pass this. Let me um, fix that, because that's bugging the heck out of me. Let's see if we can... Oh, I'm knocking my beads here. Okay. Oh, 
I think I know why is me. No, let me um let me just bring my needle up underneath that bead and see if I can fix it. Let me go through two actually. Might do a better job. Okay. So let's grab these two. Like that. Straighten it out there. That's a little better. Okay. One, two, three, four. And always bring your beads down to your work and then decide where you're going from there. I think that one is a bit wonky because I had too much tension on the thread. in here right about so that's the other thing like razzmatazz talks about um, the tension on your thread so it has to be tight but then it also has to have a little bit of give because when you start going over your beads you don't want to um, make them sit sideways and stuff. There. Just checking if there was a knot in there. And this is the other thing is you get your thread kind of getting all wonky at times. So I'm trying to decide whether I go around here because I better. Uh, what I was thinking is just doing these line and then tearing the paper out is what I'm getting at. But I think we better just go through. So let's go through here. I'm going through two. You don't have to. You can go through one. But it's just my thread came up at that position. So it looks a bit funky because of the paper. And how many lines I put in there so don't worry that will so now because we're turning the corner you might want to do actually there's a little space of straight as you turn the corner you might want to uh, do just um, two at a time but we've got a bit of a, a turn here so like that And come back up. And go through like that. And I'm going to enlarge it so that you can see that. I was going to say, let me know if you want me to reduce the screen. <laughs> it's like, uh, 
I get so used to doing videos, I forget you're not here. Okay. That's what happens 700 videos later. Um, so here's a funny story. My sister, Sylvia, um, mentioned some good news at work. And uh, she's like, you know, there's a lady at work that follows you on YouTube. But it's okay, she knows the good news. <laughs> so you can tell if, you have, if you're talking. So... So, I want to do something special for my sister. You know what? I think I want to come back here and pull this out a bit. No, you know what? I think I'll leave it because I'll tell you when we put the beads in here, that should push it out enough. So, let's just get in here. Yeah, so I got to think of something special to do for my sister. Actually, you know what? I have something special. And I would tell you what it is. But I know you're going to tell her. Her and her husband watch my videos all the time. They cast it on their TV and watch. So. So the other thing with this is um, I have seen, I think they call it French wire. And I actually have some gold, but I went on AliExpress to find some more because I saw some videos on like doing embroidery stuff like this. And they use that French wire to um, outline everything and then they fill it in with beads and it's so much easier because it's wire it just you know you just put a whole piece you cut it and then you just sew it on so I'll have to take a look at that but I'm sure I'll you know get more stuff as I do more of these. So I am working on a treasure chest for my bestie in the UK. And um, I'll be showing you some of that soon because uh, I'm almost done the top. I have to do all of the outside. Um, but I'm also going to do the inside and what I want to do on the inside of this treasure chest is put um, velour and put some cotton batten underneath and then create diamond shapes with um, poking uh, like adding Swarovski bicones in the in between the crossover spots of the diamonds so they cross over here you put the thing here so when you push it in it creates these little pillows of diamonds and uh, I'm just waiting to get some velour so we're heading out tomorrow to shop for some velour at the thrift stores because I went to the fabric store and uh they don't have anything like that anymore. I don't like, I think part of it is the COVID situation and they really didn't have a lot of anything when I was there. So this is starting to come along. Let me bring these over here. So let's grab two. The other thing that I learned the hard way is uh, about doing uh, 
using either color felt or coloring in or painting in. I've seen people paint on their stiffy the different color that they want the finished piece to be. So it, the one I saw was a fox and it had like a white tail. So they, they did a bit of the white tail and then the rest was painted brown. They covered it with beads, but anything that came through was the color that it needed to be. So that was a really cool trick that I wouldn't have thought of. Let's see if I can get these to come to the edge here. Yeah, perfect. So, so congratulations to my sister, <laughs> Sylvia. I'm so excited that she's planning on coming to visit me for my birthday in May. I'm so excited. Oh, I miss her so much. Now I'm going to grab four for this section here. Now it is kind of curved, so you might want to do it, I think, right there. This will work fine. So I apologize for my finger. My finger's holding the thread where I want it, so that's why I have to hold my finger there. And this is the other thing about working with a thicker paper. It's kind of hard to get my needle through. So I just bent my needle. No big, and by the time I'm done this, I'm sure my needle will be really warped. So we were supposed to go to massage today. I really got it all bent, but I'll fix that. The other way you can straighten these out is when we're done here, we can actually go through the whole thing and pull it a bit tight and it will straighten them out into a line. I forgot about that. Yeah, so we were supposed to go to massage. We go Monday nights to the massage college and we get really cheap but great massages. And, you know, we were kind of joking saying that was our Valentine's thing was massage. And uh, we just got a call from the dean saying that they're shutting the school down because of the snow. We got snow all night last night and it's still snowing now. It looks pretty heavy and uh, so I don't blame them. I wouldn't. It's better for the students to be safe than try and drive through the snow to get to school. So not to mention for us. And she said like they're in Halifax and we're in Dartmouth. So it takes about a half an hour to get there. You have to drive over the bridge. And the bridge isn't the problem. It's just if the roads are slick, it's not safe. So, so now we got to figure out something to do for Valentine's. We're actually going out tomorrow. Um, not to eat because I'm still doing keto but uh, to the thrift store and to Walmart and so a bit of um, I can't think of the saying I want to say consumer therapy but that's not it um, retail therapy oh my gosh That was two cups of coffee today. That's my, <laughs> two cups is my minimum. Uh, sometimes Jen will kind of get us rushed out the door for something. I blame her. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I've only had one cup of coffee. I can't think. 
I um the funny thing is when I was still in high school I got a part-time job working at a women's shelter and I worked night shifts on the weekend and um the ladies I worked with they were like see this and they'd show me the coffee machine this is how you make it you will not survive without it and it was so gross I was like you guys drink this shit crap make sure there's no knot in here so um I started drinking coffee by adding cream and sugar. So it's so funny here in Canada. If you've ever heard of Tim Hortons, it's like a coffee shop and Canadians are obsessed with Tim Hortons. It's, it's kind of boggles my mind because, um, I find their coffee sucks, but if you drink double double, which is probably the most common way to have your coffee at Timmy's then you wouldn't notice that their coffee tastes like shit pardon my language oh, can you tell I don't like Timmy's <laughs> so um, yeah if you add oh they did a they did an expose show we have one through our national television, uh, the Canadian broadcasting system, and they they did an expose on if people realize how much sugar they're drinking and how much sugar they have in their coffee. So they they evaluated the coffee to start with. And I think it was like a quarter cup of sugar was in the coffee. Don't quote me on that. It might be less. Like, that seems ridiculous. But whatever it was, it was not two tablespoons. Because to me, double-double means two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of cream. So... People were shocked. I'm like, oh my gosh. Do you ever see how they make your coffee? They're just like, you know. I don't even know if the sugar is dispensed from a machine. So this is awesome. So let's do, actually we can do this. And this, and then we can tear the bottom half off. And it's going to be hard tearing it off. I'm just, I'm just looking at it going, oh gosh, I should have used crappier paper. So let's see if we can get the started down here. Since we're in that position, let's grab a whole bunch here. It's so weird now that I'm doing keto, I can't imagine. I haven't had um, sugar in my coffee in years. I um, I used to camp in the interior of Algonquin Park. And um, when I was doing that, it was when I was in nursing school. So when I was doing that, for some reason, we didn't have a lot of the containers that we have nowadays, the plastic containers. Um, and like, uh, leak proof and stuff like that. So what they had was like Nalgene containers, which are specifically for camping. The caps have 
a tab that attaches around the actual bottle so and it attaches to the top so when you unscrew it and you take it off it stays with the bottle so you never lose it things like that it's, it's specifically made for camping but um, um, get this in here. so the other thing with camping in the interior is it's a provincial park so you have to anything you bring in you have to take out so you can't leave any garbage behind so um, so it kind of limited what you had so I don't know why we still I think we used to bring like um, coffee whitener which is gross so <laughs> can you tell I'm on a gross day? I'm like a 12 year old. That is so gross. But uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, that's when I started drinking black coffee. And the funny part is that we actually had a coffee maker that we carried into the. So that's the other thing is when you're um, canoeing and portaging in the interior, you have to limit what you bring because it's heavy and you're carrying all that stuff. So that may be more of the reason why we limited what we did. But we brought our cop, you know, one of those like European coffee things that the pot is part of where the grounds are and you unscrew it, put it, put the grounds in, you screw it back on, the water's in the top and whatever it's, so <laughs> none of those things are happy, so, but I think that's funny that we brought those, <laughs> but we couldn't bring a uh, cream. I guess we couldn't keep it fresh is probably why it was. So. so that's when I learned to drink black coffee. And let me tell you, there was twigs in it and leaves in it. <laughs> Yay, camping. So... <laughs> That was fun. So this is a kind of a funny story. The first year I went camping with my ex-husband in the interior. He used to go camping with his buds. So it was a guy thing, right? So of course when we got together, he wanted to, he wanted me to experience it. And I am so grateful for it because it was incredible. So anyway, what they would do is they would call the outpost store and ask them if the ice had melted off the lake. And it was all like these little islands. So uh, you can see as I'm getting better, it's improving. So um, what we would do is we would go in early May because if you went after that, the bugs were so bad. So we would try and go before the bugs had a time to hatch. So we'd find out, we, I mean, we needed the ice to be melted. Otherwise, we couldn't kayak or canoe across the lake so we would so that year so I guess what I'm getting at too is it was cold but as you know when spring comes you get days that are really hot so um, I had I was wearing like long johns and everything and uh, we were canoeing we were going over to the island where the guys were so the guys had still gotten together to camp and fish and we went to a different island we didn't see them there when we got there we just you go to the outpost station and then you um you pay for your fee and 
tell them where you're going and how long you're staying because they need to check on you if there's issues because it's really dangerous there's bears and other wild animals and if you fall in the water you will be hypothermic within minutes and die so that's fun <laughs> not anyway so we were kayak or canoeing that day and uh, going over to the island where the guys were and the, it started getting really warm so uh, when we got to the um, the island we we're standing around and talking to the guys and stuff and I was starting to get so hot and overheated because it was one of those beautiful spring days and here I am long johns um, sweatpants boots you know the whole schmazzle so I turned to one of the guys and I said is it okay if I take my pants off <laughs> I'm dying of heat and um, the guys are like of course you can take your pants off <laughs> I didn't think anything of it, but I did feel like I I needed to give them a heads up that the, that whether they said yes or no, those pants were coming off. So I took the pants off, but I kept my long johns. I don't know. I think they probably thought I didn't have long johns underneath. So uh, that was too funny. So they were <laughs> they were shocked. Well, later that summer, I go to a wedding. It's the same guys. They're all like friends, right? So um, I'm in the receiving line and I go to shake hands and congratulate the the new wife of this guy. And she goes, oh, so you're the one who took off her pants. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's me. So clearly the story got around. So I need to do I do it up? Yeah, I think I need to do it up. A little bit here. There, yeah. So Yep. What else did we do? Oh, okay. So here's the other thing with the doing the the um canoeing across and portaging. So we did the longest portage they had in the park. So we carried our canoe and my ex-husband was really tall, over six feet, and I am 5'3". So what would happen, didn't matter if I was in the front or the back, you put the canoe on your shoulders and hold the sides with your hands. And um, because he was so tall, the weight was down towards me and I can remember him saying no, I need to go further down here him saying oh this is really light I'm like yeah because it's on the back of my neck I'm carrying all the weight so anyway um at the end when you come back because they take you like they actually take you with a water canoe or a water taxi, they call it, and carry all your stuff and your, your canoe with you to a drop-off point. You pick the drop-off point. So we picked the drop-off point where that really long portage was, and then we made our way in ourselves. We could have had them take us all the way into the island, but then kind of like what's the point of the idea was to... 
you know, do it ourselves. So, um, so we get on the water taxi to go back and, um, let's see if I need to. Yeah, I need another one. we're talking to the people and they're like so how was that I'm like now I know what it's like for a pregnant woman you're like this is the most horrendous pain and endurance I've ever been through and then when it's over you forget about that pain and you want to do it again <laughs> so exactly like a pregnant woman they were all laughing. They thought I was nuts. I was like so hyper by then. I'm like, that's so awesome. That's too far in. I just want to secure the last two beads here. And then we'll decide if we're going to rip this paper off. And actually, what it might do, and we have to put a line here too. Is um, let me go through here. I am gonna go through the beads and see if we can straighten them out a bit. So. This is, uh, we are right on the edge here. There, that went through. Surprise. Okay. Oops. So you just go through all the beads. So I'm going to go through a few and then back. He just pulls it a little snug into the shape. Go back in some more. There. And actually now we can add the other line here, this line here, and then we can tear the bottom piece off. So we can do outline that, but we'll wait, put this on first. So I guess probably what I should do, this is an hour long as the is to do a speed thing, but I don't do editing in my videos. Come to that spot. Let's come up through that line and we'll pick up the beads there like that. Three, I think, will do this. Well, that one's busted. That middle one. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's pretty. That's got it. So there. So let's see if we can cut this off. Um, let me see. I have a, um, a blade. I'm a little leery of using a blade because it might um, cut the threads. So let's just see if I can. The other paper would have been better. It's not too bad. Let me see if I can. the beads were coming off but it was the other so the other thing too is with taking this off is it will look a lot better because the pen marks are kind of crappy We have um, a neighbor that has a hound dog that howls at everything. I can hear him out there howling. So maybe a blade would have been. <laughs> okay, so just let's learn. Make sure you use some really thin paper. damaging the thread here. Okay. Let me see. I don't even know where my This is the time where I lent my tools to my wife. <laughs> it's her fault. There we go. I knew I had a few of these. So I'm just going to be really... Wow, this won't even go through this paper. So I'm kind of holding the beads down with my 
fingernail. And again, it shouldn't be this difficult. It's just, I went and used a printer paper. Blue on there. That's why I'm having a hard time getting in there because the glue is sticking. Careful not to hit the thread. Oh, I hit the thread. Let me see. No, it didn't. It just. I can't believe this paper is that durable. But maybe because of this part here. This may not, I may not need to take this part off because it looks like it's pretty well covered. But I kind of don't want the ink. Once we put the other beads, you're not going to see any of that. So, But this one... So I do have a um, special pen that they use for quilting. It, uh, let's see, this here, so line, these are really cool. So you can put your marks with this and it disappears in 24 hours. The last time I used it, it uh, I had done an elaborate, uh, it was for Kath's jewelry box, did an elaborate uh, design on the lid, and um, when I came back a couple of hours later, I looked and it had all disappeared. So I don't know, it's an old pen, so I don't know if it just was too old. Oh, that's Not to clean that tool off. Okay. Let me see if there's any stuff here. And actually, we could probably do this, because now we know where that line is, and I'm not too worried about the nose. So we'll at least start with this, get rid of this. And cut that there. There. That's better. Okay, I'm sorry about all this. I apologize if you're not interested. 
by all means. There's lots of other videos to watch. Let me... I think this is going to be the color. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. So let's, um, let's do some different colors here. See if we can do some. So all of this is pink. Let's get some of these guys out. And I think for this, I'm just going to do it all over the place. So there's a piece of paper. going to come off. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll use that marker after if we need it. It's the ink. It looks like the ink went right through. Okay, let's put some beads here. So I think we're going to add some more. Let's Where's my thread? It's right here. Let's go in here. And so for this one, I am not going to do like straight lines and stuff. So we can kind of put it all over the place if we want. Let's see what happens with this here. We need to take two off here. I see some paper under there. Oh, that was the paper I said I wouldn't bother with. Uh, I don't, I can see the blue ink. I don't want to see that. And just one more piece here. There. Okay. Let's get The other thing that the paper does is keeps this a little stiffer as well. So. And I think we need one more here.
Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to end this here because this is... I feel like this is probably boring. But you know what? It might be soothing for people. So just, I, I'm kind of not following any particular pattern, although a line seems to be coming out of a pattern, but. Let's see what we can do here. So we'll just keep going. It's starting to come together. I think I'll put two here and connect this. There is a piece of paper in here. There, that was easy. Okay. Okay, I need to come back up, let's put one here. So I'm going to keep going just a little bit. of doing the the line just throw them in there yeah like that 
that. And then maybe one, two, three. There, that's not too bad. This part here will straighten out a bit when, when we add this area here. So let's get some nice big beads in here. Let's <laughs> These are amazing. Um, I'm trying to decide whether to Put a line of these. Yeah, let's try. I have a, so the idea with this style of beading is to to put the beads in randomly but I'm so like look at all the straight lines So yeah, these I picked the colors pretty good. I'm surprised. Let's see if we can do it this way. Okay, we'll do four at a time for this. Okay, I think we're going to end it here and I will, um, I'll either finish it with you or uh, you'll see the finished image at the beginning of the video. Thank you for, if you stayed the whole time, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably the reason why I don't do bead embroidery on camera. It's, uh. I mean, it's sewing. It takes a long time. So take care, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.